Hello guys and welcome, Soren here, and today I wanted to share with you guys my understanding of strategies in spasms. Spasms is a very popular game mode in shooters. It is also known as Control or King of the Hill with its own unique mechanic from Splatoon being the ink. Now, let's define what a strategy is before starting. It is a method or a plan designed to achieve a goal. With this video, I want to give my own perspective for game plans and how to prepare the mode effectively in order to win. So firstly, we'll talk about the different roles, their weapons, and the strong abilities. And secondly, we'll address the different state strategies. When you play competitive or ranked mode, you always have to keep in mind that the weapon you pick gives you a certain role in-game. Although, one common problem in solo queue is people picking blasters without any killing power and end up not fulfilling their role, while other players painted and supported them. Now let's break down each role. The Slayer focuses only on killing enemies. It's its primary task, everything else is secondary. Every kill opportunity should be taken by the Slayer. The Mid Slayer focuses on killing as well, but with a more nuanced play style, as it will paint more and support more the Slayer in front of him. The Mid Backliner focuses on pressuring enemy Slayers and assisting kills, basically finishing off enemies that are already weak from the Slayer's work. And to finish up, the backliner focuses on pressuring enemy slayers with long range, paying the map and getting important picks. Overall, it shouldn't die much. Now let's take a look at the strong specials and the weapon choices. In tier 2 specials, I chose to regroup Ink Armor, Bowler, Bomb Launcher and Bow Blower. All of them have a direct impact to suppress enemies and are usually a strong choice. Ink Armor supports slayers and combines well with Ink Jet. Bowler, Bomb Launcher, and Bubble can space out an entire team away from zone and solo cap it to apply a penalty, but usually don't get much kills in the current meta. Tier 1 specials regroup Stingray, Inkjet, and Inkstorm. All of them have a similar spacing power as Tier 2 specials, but usually a little extra that make them better in my opinion. What makes Inkstorm so strong is the continuous painting and damage being dealt and makes it a top tier choice to start a retake. Bomb Launcher is very close in effectiveness, just doesn't last as long. Stingray's extra is the infinite range and the ability to go through walls, that allows you to deal damage to literally anyone. In addition to spacing power, it also has an insane killing power. Speaking of insane killing power and spacing, Inkjet works similarly at a much closer range but faster time to kill, assuming you can direct accurately. And we can also add it, it also paints relatively well. Alright, now let's take a look at the different weapons I would recommend to fulfill each role effectively. So for Slayers, I would definitely recommend Blaster, Custom Blaster, Spotlight Shot, Tantec, Charge Launcher, and Spot Roller. I chose hold these 6 weapons, but I think we could introduce a few others, but it's just my personal choice there. I think the two strongest here are Custom Blaster and Tantec because of the power of Inkjet. For mid Slayer weapons, this is the most free uh, weapon class, I would say. You can play pretty much whatever fits the comp that is not too backline, and you can play a second slaying weapon. So, for example, if you currently run a Tantex Fire Shot as a slaying weapon, you can add a second slayer being the Custom Blaster, and it will work very well as well. Now, I really think that the meta is really going towards the Double Rapid, and if we have the Double Rapid, we still want to have a backline a weapon that will maintain the range. I will go back to the, the backline of weapons later, but a very strong comp currently in 3.0 runs one slaying weapon, double rapid, and a backline of weapon. Alright, as I introduce this about rapid last year, let's take a look at mid backline of weapons. For mid backline of weapons, you really don't have a choice. You really want to play rapid last year. I still chose to put the slasher deco here, but it's definitely uh, a weaker weapon than the other three. And most of the time, you want to combine a rapid deco with a rapid pro. For backliner weapons, I chose to put again a Rapid Blaster. Rapid Blaster is, in my opinion, definitely the top tier weapon of version uh, 3.0. But as well, you can have very strong choices with the Chargers, the Jet Squasher, and the Heavy Spathling, all giving either a high killing power, a high capacity of getting important picks, and also the ability to paint the map accurately. Now let's take a quick look at the niche weapons being played on specific maps. On most maps, there are key positions that you want to control to have an advantage over your opponents, such as Skate Park Top Middle. And because of this, some weapons are becoming strong on these maps because of these winning conditions or winning positions, I would say. So I took the example of Skate Park, and just Skate Park Top Middle being so important to hold, Skate Park 
usually runs double tri-slosher. Mori Towers works pretty much the same and you always want to have double tri-slosher as well. I want a mobile goal with double spotling. Port Mackerel and Piranha Pit will be very strong curling bombs, Tingray and Inked maps. Like, all of them being counters to each other, Inkjet works very well to avoid Stingray, etc. About Shellendorf, you always run double double dualies because controlling the top right of the enemy team with beacons is just so important and you come back much faster. Next are strong abilities in spot zones, and I chose to separate them into two categories. Firstly, any ability that helps coming back faster will be your choice in spot zones. Each death being so important, you want to run these three abilities for most weapons and especially the slayers. It also allows you to group up with a teammate and create 2v1 situations. Secondly, combo, special charge up, special saver and special power up are also useful abilities to run depending on the weapon. Specials are usually the key to create multi kills and get control back. These abilities give you faster and more impactful specials during the different states of the game. They can be mixed with faster comeback abilities and you want to run some of these abilities for most of the backline weapons. Finally, let's take a look at the three different state strategies. Neutral, Retake and Hold. In Neutral, starting positions and first engagements are the most important. Losing the first teamfight is always bad as you will suffer the special snowball during your retake. In this clip, I die early, but simply watching at the map is enough to show firstly, how strong the Dabble Rapid work together, secondly, how fast we claim map control after making a full wipe on the enemy team, and finally, how fast I can get back onto the battlefield thanks to faster comeback abilities I spoke about earlier. Now during retake, you want to get safe high ground positions, charge specials and combine them in order to either cap zones or kill enemies. This is the hardest part of every game and it requires a lot of team play. During this part, you want to anticipate and force enemy specials while still killing them and getting them back. Always check on the top of the screen who has special ready, who is dead and what that means. A dead charger or a dead rapid means a lot of free space to move with Inkjet for example. Now to engage a retake, you usually want to start up by combining Inkjet with an Inkstorm, a Stingray or a Bomb Launcher. The slaying weapons and the rapid must go in and deal damage together in order to kill fast. If a retake fails and you are the last player alive, you can either stay back and give safe jumps or jump back to your spawn and reset. Once the retake is successful, like in this clip, you want slayers to push close to the enemy team spawn and try to get kills while backliners paint the map in order to snowball the specials. All this is made in order to stop or delay enemy team retake. A single peek on the T-Take who dropped mindlessly in zone before his teammates is usually enough to get another 30 points. Keep in mind to use your specials to counter enemy specials such as using your own ink armor when the enemy team uses theirs. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. Hope you guys could learn something in this video. I also hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed working on it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.